before we talk about um, what we have done in terms of changing our company from a line organization into a self-organization within one minute, I would like to give you an idea what is our actual business. And as you can see here, my background is in the German army. So I was 12 years in the German army. Um, afterwards, I did studies on autonomous driving with Audi and Volkswagen. I did my PhD on that. And I put some business experience on top of that in Switzerland. I studied in Switzerland and in the US. So that's my background. And that's our company, 425 people today. Um, when we did the change, we have been 360. And uh, we have 32 nations and uh, nationalities in our company. So high degree of diversity. So what do we do? We do, we work on the future. We work on autonomous driving. We work on LiDAR devices, on laser scanners, in order to understand the environment of the vehicle. And that is a safety critical product. Because if you wanna put your child in a car and you ask the car, please bring my kid to the kindergarten, you want the car doing it safely. So please have that in mind if you change an organization in the way as we did it. And in the future, you can use this device, but um, our technology is already in the market. Uh, since 2017, if you purchase an Audi uh, A6, for example, then you can find these boxes in the grill and there's a traditional laser scanner. Traditional means there's a spinning mirror. But we are working on the future. And the future means if you want to have a safely driving autonomous vehicle, you need to see everything a small stone and other things as well. And so we developed the chip, which you can see in my left hand, and the optics, which we put in front of the chip that you can see in my right hand side, and we bring it together. And then we put these boxes on a vehicle. And if you put three of these boxes on the front end of a vehicle, we collect one million measurements per second. So we have one, imagine one million single measurements in front of the vehicle, so we can see everything. And that's the future of autonomous driving. But how did we get there? Because that is pure innovation. We founded the company in 98, and um, in 2016, ZF uh, became our shareholder, and we were 64 people at that time, and then we had to grow very fast. And in 2019, we had 360 people. And it was obvious if you want to grow even more, it is complicated doing it in a line organization. And so we decided um, in a very small group, just the founders of the company, we decided let's make this experiment. Let's change the company. So we invited 360 people in one room. We talked about the past, then we had lunch, and after lunch I raised the question, okay, how do we want to grow? And one young guy said, well, let's, let's destroy what we have, and let's do it in a different way. And so we put really this button on stage, I asked him to press it, he was not um, informed what happened, and then we said, okay, take out all your seats, come back, forget what you have heard what you know about our organization, but you know what we need. You know what you can do. You know what you're good in. So please meet with those guys you want to work together. Figure out that's the task of my team. Write it down. And three hours later, give me your sheets of paper. And then we will see how it works. But nobody is anymore a leader by definition. And we don't want to have leaders. We only want to have a network organization. So we defined three, four, five rules, and they had to do it. And the idea was there is nothing that you can read about how does the organization afterwards look like. Everything was taken away within a second. And that is 
crazy if you do it because the next day you have chaos. Very simple things. If you don't prepare anything, the very next day you have a new team. Where do you, where do you want to work? This was before Corona. So they went into the office. They saw a room. Oh, there are two PCs, in, but the room is nice. Come on, kick out the PCs. Let's take the room. Let's sit in there. Let's put a sign there. This is our team. Yeah, but the content of our work, we are, well, we need the ASIC team. Where's the ASIC team? Does it still exist? Paul was in the ASIC team. We have six buildings. Where's Paul? Can Paul tell us if he's still working on it or not, or who does it? So people had to walk around to figure out who is still working on this topic. And then we, we had all these discussions. So the first two weeks were very emotional, very stressful. It was exhausting. Every morning we collected answers from the teams. We, we condensed them, we put them together, and we, we wrote down overnight, we wrote down the answers, and we gave the answers, and so on. So we had daily discussions all around the clock. It was, it was a great time. And um, yeah, we changed it. But please have in mind, we are in the automotive industry, and we work on a safety-critical product. So we did it in a way that our customers did not recognize what we are doing. Nobody mentioned it. But some customers were surprised that there are some new guys, young guys, taking over responsibility, being motivated much more than the other guy before, whatever. So it completely changed. So we put all these um, papers, each page is one team. We put it on the floor, really on the floor, and we put these red lines there. And then we explained to 360 people in smaller teams, look, this is how the new organization works. And then we started to develop software tools in the background. How do you organize this network company and so on? And what is it, what is it based on? In a self-organization, you need more leadership than in a line organization. Because in a self-organization, every decision is a result, is a compromise. You, you, you take everybody you need on one table. And so we have developed an, an advanced system of servant leadership. So I, I love the presentation that you have given. And I would really love to talk with you afterwards because this is the basis for all what we do. So, our claim where IBEO is, is the future, and IBEO is ahead in technology. We want to bring this also to our organization because we believe we are a small piece of the society, but in 10, 20 years, people want to work in the way as we do it today. But we are all used to work in a line organization somehow, in kindergarten, school, whatever, university is all line-based. So, and we recognize every day that somebody, well, now you behave in a line organization. Please change that. And the basis is, and we have heard this in the morning, respectful communication. Within 18 months after doing that change, we have lost 11 people. Only 11. <clears throat> so, we want to be faster. That's what, why we did it. We want to have every employee at the very perfect right position in the company. But we also need to work on the company. We need to improve the self-organization. And that's what we do in a very small team. So we have two people. Marie is one of this. We have two people which help our employees to work on the organization and to improve the self-organization. About 10% of our people, 40 people, work in parallel to their ordinary job. They work on topics our employees are interested in to improve the organization. And Marie and her colleague, they help our employees to organize this. Because how do you want to change the organization if you don't know how to do it? So, and that is fantastic because with 10% of all the people being part of it, not during the working time, on top, in parallel, at the weekend or whatever. That's incredible. <clears throat> so the very first day, 
We later on made this uh, network on the left side because every team told us we need input from that team, from that team, and so on. And in the team, you do the work, and then you have circles, and circle typically organize the work of several teams. But nevertheless, this is a disaster on the left side because you can't find anything. So what we do today, for example, every employee puts in, like you do it on, on Facebook, puts in uh, some, some information about you and the guys you want to work with, or you do work with, or you like, whatever. And then we can analyze this information, and um, we have developed a software which analyzes all this information in the way, are they just friends, because they have met some time ago by incident, or do they really work together? And if they work together, well then, in that team, there is definitely a connection to that team. Immediately, you can set up, set up a process in a much more professional way because you exactly know how the information flows in the company. So the results are the team spirit increased significantly and the sense of responsibility increased as well. It's not always good that everybody knows about what is ongoing because a manager is used to understand, okay, in half a year I need five more people or I cannot fulfill my task. But if you know it, you know it, you know it as well, you probably cannot sleep anymore. It's a challenge. So, but anyway, the hidden potentials are now really leading the company or running the company and are part, for example, also of my daily life. I have a much greater network today than ever before in the company. And this is the future. So we want to have a sentient company. This is our vision, what we are working on. Don't ask me in details how it looks like, but we are trying to go into that direction, and that's our mission. And in the center, it's always, from the beginning on, the employee and the team and the company as being part of the society. And we do this on support, trust, and a huge degree of transparency. Next week, there will be Another publication, if you want to read about it, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>